oh, you're there during the uh, Epcot uh, art festival. It's a cool festival. Good food booths, beautiful booths. art booths. Um, it's a good time. It's a it's one of my favorite so festivals. You started a I would reverse it. Hollywood. Yeah, I would because Hollywood, um, Epcot. Um, not only can I reasonably host a talk show and a radio show, but I'm also a travel agent, if you didn't know. I just helped a member of our staff with a possible trip to Disney World. Um, and now it's time to pay the bill. That'll be $75, Director Leo. <laughs> Let me Venmo that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. Let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Hey, welcome to the show. I'm just grateful, let me tell you. Uh, we have a little ice storm here in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. We had like, I don't know, 80 uh, people scheduled. Only eight brave people uh, right there. The other people were quitters. No, I'm just done. I'm, I don't. I don't blame them. Safety first, safety first. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Let's start with this. Most of us haven't had to use our ice scrapers on our car much this winter. We've been lucky, that's why I haven't complained. But we all know how frustrating it actually can be. Look at this video, look at this. A woman's frustration, look at her! You go, Vicky! A woman's frustration is caught on tape in New Jersey. Look at her. <laughs> she is aggressively, aggressively scraping that ice off of her windshield. Get that cardio, girl. She is working. I love it. The meltdown. The melt. The meltdown was re recorded by her coworker, who stopped after realizing she saw what was happening. Yeah. Anyway, no ice in the studio today. Roll that music, Leo. Gentlemen, all eight of you, give it up for Kindle, everybody. I do it, love. Good morning, good afternoon, hello. Oh, oh my goodness. Did you turn your mic on now? We are broadcast professionals. Can you not turn it? Is it stuck in your dress? Does she have to take her dress off to do it? Aaron, Aaron Schwab, can you sit for a second while it just to, to give it up for Aaron Schwab, everybody? Aaron Schwab. <laughs> Aaron. Aaron Schwab is our audience coordinator. She's the the uh, the Bette Midler of the Twin Cities, and Aaron doesn't have a mic either, so it doesn't. I also do not have a microphone. <laughs> but you, but oh, Kendall's back, everybody. There we go. There we Thanks, go. Aaron. Thank you. It's just my mic's just gonna sit back here now. It's gonna be fine. Okay. Everything's fine. Are we good now? Are we I good? I got distracted can we, by Lauren. Can America hear? Can America hear uh, Kendall now? There we go. Yeah. You know when you have your routine? I know, I get it. Like, I have a routine for how I put my mic and my IFB and everything on, and I messed up the room. I do! <laughs> <laughs> I messed it up today. There was a guest in the other studio, and I was like, hi, it's so good to see you! And I just... No. I get it. I get. It. Look, it's not a big deal. That's why I love live TV. Nobody Hi. cares. It's. Uh, I love the imperfection of it. Anyway, I'm uh, glad we can I'm hear here. you now. Yes. I'm here. Okay. Hi. Uh, 
Let me talk about Joe Maurer real quick because here in Minnesota, here in Minnesota, uh, Joe Maurer is our guy. Uh, born and raised here in Minnesota. If you're a sports fan, you know he joined the Minnesota Twins and never left. Yesterday, we just want to say congratulations. Joe was uh, is going to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, and we just and he's the nicest guy. And it and it. I'm just going to pull this up. I've told the story a lot of times. But back in 2017, the Twins were. Uh, foolish enough to invite yours truly to throw out the first pitch and now so there I am there we go and and the reason the reason we're showing this is because I threw it to Joe Maurer uh, and you know you, you never know when you do this you never know who's gonna come out to the mound to pitch to so I'm out there I'm already nervous I'm not athletic in any way any form any category and I'm, I'm out on the mound and all of a sudden I hear the announcer at Target Field say uh, and to the mound is Jason Matheson and please welcome Joe Maurer and I was like no <laughs> and I, I I know Joe from charity events and stuff and Joe looked at me on the mound and started laughing and he mouthed to me what are you doing here <laughs> like literally like why are you here why are you here anyway question. he's the nicest guy one of the nicest guys in sports and we're thrilled congratulations Joe congratulations okay if everybody's mic is on, let's start the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Okay. Oscar outrage continues. A day after the Oscar nominations were announced, the backlash to a pair of big-time snubs is raging today. The Barbie movie, you know, you knew I was going to do this. The Barbie movie earned eight nominations, uh, you know, including Best Picture. But, um, hello, the two women responsible for that movie uh, were both snubbed. Director, director Greta Gerwig did not get a Best Director nomination, but did get a screenwriting nom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> adapted screenplay, and that's another controversy as well. And star Margot Robbie missed out on Best Actress, although she was nominated as a producer in Best Picture because she also produced Barbie. Ryan Gosling, meanwhile, who played Ken in the movie, uh, was nominated for Best Supporting Actor and released a supportive statement saying, uh, in part, quote, there is no Ken without Barbie and there is no Barbie movie without Greta and Margot, the two people most responsible for this history-making, globally celebrated film. Co-star America Ferreira, who was also nominated for Best Supporting Actress, also spoke out. She says it's disappointing not to see Greta Gerwig on the list, saying she did just about everything a director could do to deserve it. As for Robbie, uh, America said what Margot did, what Margot achieved as an actress is truly unbelievable. Well, Jimmy Kimmel basically signed up, with, summed up rather, what a lot of us are feeling last night. Take a listen. Margot Robbie and Greta Gerwig were not nominated for acting or directing, whereas Ryan Gosling was. He got a nomination for playing Ken, which ironically was kind of the plot of the Barbie movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? The... The snub, the snub uh, basically validated the thesis of the movie, mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Right. A lot of people, too, are saying, just so you know, Academy, two women can be up for Best Director. It doesn't have to just be one every year. You yeah. can nominate two of us. And also, let's just remove it from just being about a woman. Right. Uh, how about just the best? I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, just a, a bottom line, let's bottom barrel it. Uh, you, you, you're you're going to give them all, you're going to give the movie, and I know I said this a version of yesterday, and I do get how the Academy works. Directors nominate directors, and the entire Academy directs Best Picture. That's how this situation can happen. But, our, I mean, crime any nittles. It's just, right. it just <laughs> defies everything right. to think that, again, this woman cracked the code of Barbie. Mm -hmm. Directors and studios have been trying to do this for years. She did it, and you didn't honor her. It doesn't matter if she was a man, woman, uh, E.T. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just about being the best. And mm -hmm. she was one of the best this year. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom line. <laughs> Next up for movies, let's move to TV, shall we? Call it the Suits Effect. So we've all seen the resurgence in popularity for Suits uh, after arriving, yeah, the cable TV drama that was on USA. Uh, after Suits arrived on Netflix last year. Well, 
Now the Netflix, now the head of Netflix is calling on studios to put more of their shows on Netflix. Ted Sarantos is the bigwig over there, and he says the network's platform can add more value to old shows than the individual studio can on their own streaming services. He named shows like Breaking Bad, The Walking Dead, Poops Creek, oh, uh, yeah, for, uh, yeah, for becoming more popular after hitting Netflix. He's not wrong. In the case of, uh, of uh, uh, S. Creek, that show was on the Canadian Broadcasting Channel and was a middling success. Mm -hmm. Here in America, it had a cult following, but not a mainstream following. Right. That show went on Netflix and became a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Suits did, did really well for the USA Network. It went on uh, Netflix and became a juggernaut. Right. So, yeah, but what happened was, wahaha, wahaha happened was, um, in around 2019, when all these studios were like, ooh, we're gonna make our own streaming services and we're gonna keep all of our property for ourselves. Like Disney removed every Marvel thing from Netflix. Right. Paramount re uh, removed every one of their properties. Well, all of these Paramount Pluses, Disney Pluses, um, I don't know, Yoohoo, whatever. Um, oh, uh, well, you all of them. Yeah, they don't have the distribution that Netflix has. No. So uh, now Disney is like, uh, Mickey Mouse is like, maybe we'll put some of our shows <laughs> back on Netflix. Right. And Paramount, if Paramount was smart, I would put your Yellowstone franchises on uh, on Netflix. I would love that. That'd be I'm great. serious. I mean, those shows are big. The ta the Tyler yes. uh, Taylor Sheridan yeah. universe. Yeah. Put it on Netflix. It'll be even bigger than it is. Mm -hmm. I would watch it. I'm not getting Paramount Plus. Sorry. No, that you. I'm not joking. <laughs> you are. You're making their point. Yes. All of these niche services. Anyway, I could go on forever, but I'll bore you. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. More hot news. Welcome back. Uh, is your mic on? Just joking. Uh, th <laughs> thanks to his relationship with Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, uh, or as we're supposed to call him, Kels, is uh, one of the most talked about football players in the NFL. But it seems we have uh, one thing wrong that I just mentioned when it comes to Travis. Stephen Colbert explains. We all love Kansas City Chiefs tight end and glazed pork shoulder just about to be ready to come out of the slow cooker, Travis Kelsey. But apparently, we've all been pronouncing his name wrong this whole time. See, we've all been saying Kelsey when it's actually pronounced Chalamet. <laughs> I am joshing, of course. According to a discussion on Inside the NFL, the correct pronunciation is Travis Kells. And in a podcast, Travis's dad backed it up, saying that the proper way to say their last name is Kells. Come on! Changing the pronunciation of your last name is the most pretentious thing I have ever heard. Or my name isn't Stephen Colbert, which it's not, and it never has been. <laughs> Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert. That's right. More late night now. Kevin James is speaking out, talking about that viral meme. Uh, that used a photo of him from his days on the King of Queens. He was a guest on The Tonight Show last night. Look. There, I have to talk to you about this, if you don't mind. There is a very hugely popular Kevin James meme that took over the internet a few months ago. Uh, so people speaking, love it. Yeah. It's, the, it, it's a photo from King, oh King of Queens. This is the original photo right here. Look at this. And this... Um, <laughs> It spawned a million memes. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you remember doing this photo shoot? I remember. And you know what it's like when you first get a sitcom, you just listen to any, but you're just so happy to be there. Of course. And the photographer who had no, he was just telling me to do goofy things. And he was like, <laughs> smile now like you're sexy, now like you're, <laughs> you're, you're shy, but now you're kind of, and I got into this position where I'm like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> and then I said, well, please bury that one. And he yeah. goes, yeah, no worries. Yeah. That will come back. <laughs> And now it's everywhere, yeah. James, uh, by the way, James and Jimmy even recreated the viral meme for the show's opening uh, last night. <laughs> he was here, you know, in, in, in my list of celebrities when I do, um, when I do a Q&A with the studio audience, I inevitably 
get asked a couple times a week who's been you know who are some of your favorite who's the nicest celebrities mm -hmm. that you've interviewed who are the meanest on the list of, of nice, mm -hmm. I always forget to mention Kevin James. Kevin was physically in our building uh, uh, in a, around, what, 2010, 2011? Paul Blart. Oh, for Paul Blart oh, Mall Cop. Cop. Yeah, for that movie. Because for if you don't know around the country watching us, we are probably the home of the Mall of America. And uh, yeah, we are. I love the MOA. Please come visit us. Bring, uh, give us your tourism dollars. And uh, but uh, so he was here publicizing it at MOA. He was uh, in our other studio. Nice, nice, nice. And again, just like some of my favorites, didn't come with a publicist. He came with like the PR rep for the, um, the movie locally, right. but he didn't have a big team. He just sat there in a coat. And we just, and he talked, he talked to the crew, another good sign. Mm -hmm. um, another good sign is when they talk to the audience or the crew. Good, good guy. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed him very much. I loved that show and the movie Hitched. You remember that with Will Smith? Oh, with, with Will, Will Smith. Smith. Yeah. The, the, I'll never forget the dance moves where you just yeah. stay in your zone. That was a cute tip. And you forget how big that movie Thank was you. so big. That was a huge hit for Will it was such and a for good Kevin movie. James. <laughs> Next up, we have a winner in the Celebrity Jeopardy competition. Uh, Thank you, Mighty Eight. And just in case, spoiler, spoiler alert. I don't need mean Jeopardy fans emailing us today. I don't, yeah. I don't need that nonsense. Abbott Elementary star uh, Lisa Ann Walter was in third place heading into Final Jeopardy last night. But then this happened. Okay. What forward phrase did you write down? What is the butler did it? That is correct. Ah. I have Maraca had the lead, $21,100. Do you know the butler did it? What is, oh. I'm so sorry, he oh did not. God. He wagered $20,000, knocking him down to 1100 Lisa Ann Walter, you just won Celebrity Jeopardy, and you won a million dollars. That would be me. That would absolutely be me. Uh, Walter. Walter was too stunned to talk after coming from behind to claim the million dollar prize. The money, by the way, will benefit uh, uh, the charity, the Entertainment Community Fund. Yeah, later that night, she was on Jimmy Kimmel Live and talked about her win and her trophy. And not only do you get a million dollars for charity, you got an $18 trophy here as well. <laughs> Pick that thing up and tell me if that's not the heaviest it's plastic. Pretty, it's of crap pretty. Together. It's pretty solid for plastic. Where will this go? Will this be uh, oh, on display in your this, home? This incredibly tacky item has been sitting right underneath my television, right in front of my little recliner, where I can look at it every day that I watch Jeopardy. But wait, you had to front and center. I don't blame you. Yeah. I love her. I love Al I love Abbott Elementary, and I've always enjoyed her. What you well, look she, confused? I'm. Okay, was she in the Parent Trap? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was like, this voice. How do I know this voice? Yeah, she was in the Parent Trap. Oh, She's I love great. That movie. She's one of those actresses. You're like, oh, her. She yeah. was in blank and blank and <laughs> blank. Just did that. <laughs> she also told Kimmel that. Um, you know, she's she's hot. Like she's she's a good-looking woman. Mm -hmm. She said that uh, she's kind of like a, a little cougar in in the uh, Hollywood community. Ooh. She has younger uh, celebrities sliding into her DMs. Whoa. She wouldn't. She name dropped. She wouldn't say who, but she was. I have younger stars sliding into my DMs. <gasps> she's a good-looking. I don't want to. She's a. Uh, uh, a good looking woman. I hate to go, she's a good looking older woman. I don't like when people say that, but yeah. She's good looking. Hi, girl. More mature woman. There Get we it. go. Foxy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Next in the dish, let's talk style, shall we? Celebs showing skin on the red carpet. Nothing new. Been doing that since uh, Marilyn Monroe. But there's a new trend among guys. That's all. Okay. Oh, someone ooed guys. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm out of business if that's the case. Um, but this trend is all about the chest. The, here's the headline from the Daily Mail. The rise, rise of the heavage. That's right. The heavage. Yeah. The trend, the trend is having a moment with the Bear star Jeremy Allen White wearing this black see-through shirt with a plunging net, neckline at the Golden Globes sh uh, showing his heavage. That's right. <laughs> then Saltburn star uh, Barry Keegan rocked this plunging ivory look showing his heavage uh, at a premiere. 
Even Ryan Gosling, Ken, is showing his, oh! yeah, showing his heavage by purposely forgetting to button his shirt. A stylist says it's a way for guys to be a little less formal and show off, quote, casual sexiness. Oh. Ca why did I say it like that? Casual, casual sexiness. sexiness. Yeah. Oh, baby. I, uh, I don't mind the heavage. I know you don't mind the heavage. I don't the mind heavage. the heavage. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> I never would have guessed it. I, I, I dated someone that uh, uh, never unbuttoned his shirt always down to basically here. Yeah. And no matter what it was, girl, we could be going to Cracker Barrel. We could be going. It's all the way down. We could go and be going to a Presbyterian church. We could be going to an amusement park. We could be going uh, dog sledding. He would uh, be down to here always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always know how many cocktails my husband's had at a wedding by how much heavage he's showing. Because as the night goes on, like the tie comes off, and then a button, and then another button, and another button, and um, he starts just suspenders, and it's open. And yeah. That, um. <laughs> been in one event with your husband and yeah that tracks uh -huh. uh, it was uh yeah there was a little halloween extravaganza uh, featuring does my memory what do i remember from that night oh uh you were selling jello shots uh and Annie was there too. and you weren't even a server at that restaurant no. uh, but we yeah. were in the kitchen we just you know, uh -huh. it was a great day. and jordan as the night went on Slowly, slowly. Do we slow need to wrap up? We do. Next do to the dish. <laughs> oh, we have time now? Okay, yeah. That was yeah. weird. No. Next to the dish. I know many of you are probably with me on this, but I'm sure some of you are not, and I'm going to get hate mail, and that's fine. I'm really, really, really tired of hearing about Stanley Cups. Okay. We have a very small audience today, and one and a half clap for that. <laughs> Today, we have a no. pair of Stanley stories you will not believe. We're not talking the hockey Stanley Cups, <laughs> Aaron. Aaron. Aaron Audience like coordinator uh, Aaron's like this. Do you mean hockey? No, no. We're the in Minnesota. Stanley Cups. Anyway, okay. Here's our first story. It's in California. A woman is arrested. Look at this picture, everybody. A woman is arrested after police say she stole... $2,500 worth of Stanley Cups from a store. Officers caught her on the highway and searched her car and found all of these. Can you believe? If you're going to get arrested, why are you going to get arrested stealing Stanley Cups? And those things are heavy. They're you heavy. Like lifted one of those? That's a lot of luggage. I don't know. Huh. Okay. Story number two, this one from the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal re reported on a teen girl who says her parents spent around $3,000 last year on Stanley Cups. She now has 67 of them and shares videos on TikTok about her collection. The girl uses each of the cups and matches them to her outfit. Uh, <laughs> this is why France hates us. <laughs> We are doomed. Where is the asteroid? This is why. This is what's happening in society. Where's the comet? Where's the asteroid? We don't deserve it anymore. We just, we, yeah. We're done. You don't even have one. You have a fake Stanley. Oh, you do have one. I got it two years ago. Yeah. I did. I got it a couple years ago. But you were the, before the trend. Thank you. And it is really heavy. So I got like the faux Stanley and it's way better. So yeah. try it out. It's way my, better. The Brits, the, I always talk about my friends from Joanna and Beth at Walt Disney World who were here, the Brits. Mm -hmm. They have two the size of like a, a Ford, a, a Ford Pinto. I mean, yeah. it's like they're the biggest cups I've ever seen in my life. They like break your wrist. I, I, mean, I don't swear. understand. Why do you need that much liquid? Anyway, we're thirsty. Not that thirsty. Time now to meet our first JVIP of the week. Each week we feature at home fans of the show. Meet Michelle Lesky from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. She loves the camaraderie between Kendall and I and how real we are. Michelle gets a Jason Show mug, not a Stanley Cup, and is entered to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture, and a $250 gift card, to, or gift certificate rather, to Renew Med Spa. The Thrifty Traveler, more when we come back. Back in a moment. We have a travel 
theme today. Coming up in just a little bit on The Jason Show, our buddy the Thrifty Traveler is back with the dish on spring break travel deals. Plus, are domestic flight prices really coming down? And keeping with our travel theme, my latest best thing ever. I'm hitting the rails for this one. That and more when we come back. Well, with only weeks to go, can you believe this, until spring break season begins? That's just crazy to think about. Time is running out, really, to book your trip. And we're helping you, as we always try to do at the beginning of these seasons, find the best prices for flights. Here to help is the founder of ThriftyTraveler.com, our good friend. Welcome back, Jared, everybody. Hi, Hi Jared. Jason. Great to see you. Good to see you. I, uh... We missed you last time. You were unavailable. You were you're, you were very busy, and uh, your colleague filled in. Kyle did. He was very nervous trying to replace you, <laughs> and I, he was very nervous. He was sweating a little bit. I said, "You did. A, he did a fabulous job." I said, "But there's no one like Jared. It's good to have him back." Yeah. Um, can I ask a? I want to ask uh, a broad, uh, no pun, uh, you know, uh, uh, flight analogy. Thirty-seven thousand feet view. Domestic flight prices, and I know there are a lot of variables, have been insanely high for, I don't know, 21, 22, into 23. What is the trend line looking like as we go into 24? Yeah, flight prices in general, whether it's domestic or international, are on the downward slide generally. I mean, we're seeing some, lo some of the lowest prices we've seen since like 2019, pre-pandemic, but it's going to really depend on what's your home airport, where you're going, because things can still seem very expensive, but it's important to remember, like, broadly, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, and it. tell me if, I, if this is anecdotal or if I'm seeing real evidence. I'm seeing, and look, I'm Delta, I'm, we're a Delta hub here, and, but Delta's in Orlando and Chicago. I am seeing more flight deal opportunities. Is that a mirage, or is this, are you, is it true? I'm seeing more emails from you guys. No question, you know, running a company that literally is based off of finding flight deals, we are finding way more deals, whether you're booking, you know, a cash ticket or using your points in miles. Um, things are just definitely getting cheaper, and there are so many more opportunities. Do you see that? I mean, again, crystal ball time, a lot of variables. Do you see this continuing at least through the uh, quarter one, quarter two? Yeah, I definitely do. I think the airlines are trying to fix this oversupply. I know everything's nerdy and supply no, and demand. No, please, no, this Econ is why you're here. 101 is really what it goes back to. You just have too much supply, so the price is this, whatever. Anyhow, there's just too many seats out there and not enough butts in them. Because we, yeah. were, we were talking about last time, revenge travel is over. It is. All of the revenge travel that we all did when we couldn't in the pandemic, I'm quickly explaining that, people have already done those trips and now everyone's like, okay, we're done for a little while. I, did I explain that okay? Yeah. The airlines are constantly trying to predict where people want to fly, when they want to fly, and they have schedules set, and they made some wrong assumptions, and now flight prices continue to decrease. They don't want that, so they're going to be fixing, decreasing supply, changing routes to try to, yeah. We're going to get to deals a little bit later, don't worry, but you know we always have to talk about whatever's popping in travel uh, news-wise. The Boeing 737 MAX 9 issues, are they currently flying? No, not yet. It's important to remember that like this aircraft, a very specific variant of the MAX is grounded, so unless you're flying Alaska Airlines, you're more than likely not going to be impacted. There's some United aircraft, but not as many. So unless you're getting the Pacific Northwest, again, probably flying Alaska, you're not going to be impacted by it. But I mean, this is a from a flying, like uh, just industry thing. This is having a huge impact on Boeing in is long it? term. Oh, yeah. Whether airlines are going to be purchasing Airbus aircraft versus Boeing aircraft. And I know it's a little nerdy. No, but please. This is, this I is love when you nerd out, Jared. Things. I love when you nerd out. I, I like to geek out a no, little bit. I, you, that's what but people, this yeah. is, like, airlines are choosing their path forward. You know, Air, uh, Alaska is going to be soon merging with Hawaiian. They have to choose. Are they going to be an airline that features Airbus, 
or Boeing. And I think with what they're experiencing now, it is painful. Alaska is a, a phenomenal airline, but they are their reputation has been tarnished by you know this incident. I never, I mean, not a perfect barometer, but when you are spoofed on SNL, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think you know that when you get into the zeitgeist in that way, never a good thing. No, no. Did you see that? Skit? I did. Of it course, was, it's amazing. It was perfect. If anyone hasn't seen it, the Alaska Airlines SNL skit, amazing. Okay, I need you to nerd out, nerd out again on one of my favorite topics. Okay, credit card points using credit card points now let me just read this why it's better to go outside the credit card portal can you kind of explain that so I not 100% sure the question oh transferring credit card points yeah. to an airline, airline. Oh, instead yes. of using them I'm sorry book, the yes. host uh, messed up not the guest <laughs> no. instead of Instead of uh, using yeah. the credit card points with buying the flight within the credit card company, you transfer yes. them to the airline. Is that what we're supposed to do? That is what you can do and what, you know, if you're kind of like feeling more comfortable and there's just so much value, especially if you want to fly business class. Let's say you want to go to Europe next summer. Let's say you want to fly to even Hawaii, you know, and maybe a lie flat seat or, you know, at least up front. Using your points and miles, transferring them from your Chase account from your Amex account, from your city account, to maybe another airline like United, Delta, American, some foreign carrier, carriers like Singapore. That's where a lot of the value is at. And this has gone mainstream in the last two to three years. We used to talk about it, did. you know, five, six years ago when I was on the show. And people would be like, I don't know what that is. But yeah. now this is like a real thing. And there's tons of value out there. Um, but it can be a little tricky. As far as, okay, hold that thought. Why it can be tricky, what you can do, plus... The legendary deals from Jared when we come back for spring break. Back in a moment. Sorry, buddy. I just phrased that well. Uh, I'm telling you, he gives the best travel tips and tricks. Welcome back. Always love when he's here. It's always a good conversation. Jared from Thrifty Traveler. Okay, let's pick up uh, where we left off, and that is... Uh, transferring, if you got a credit card, let's just use Chase for the, for, uh, just for, you have Chase points that you've collected because you've used your Chase card at the grocery store. You want to transfer them to an airline. Let's use United for an Let's example. use United. Uh, pitfalls. So the first time you transfer, you're going to think that it does it instantly and it should, but the first time these new accounts, especially if you have a new account created, um, it can take some time to transfer out. So, you know, let's say you find some amazing deal, you really want to book, the, just know that the transfer might take up to 24 hours sometimes, so don't freak out, even though you might look somewhere and be like, it's instant transfers, it's important to know it can take some time for that first transfer. And don't feel like, oh my God, my points are lost forever. That's what that everyone <laughs> thinks, that they screwed up, because it's scary. It is scary. It's scary, because it's a one-way street. You transfer them out of your, you know, Amex account to Delta, and it doesn't do it instantly, and you're like, oh my God, and I'd be scared too. Yeah. But just fear not, give it some time. Let's move to spring break. Uh, I could talk about credit cards all day, but we won't. Uh, let's move to spring break. Let me bottom line it for you. Uh, for the audience, is it too late to book spring break deals? Not, and I'm so glad that we're talking about it today. You know, most folks, as long as you book Thank you, 30 Mighty Eight. to yes. 60 days out, um, that's when, you know, especially 30 days before your butt's going to be in that seat or your family's, you want to be you want to be looking for flights right now you don't want to book within 30 days so now is the time and i know everyone has different spring break depending on where you go to school so just be looking now set up google flights price alerts for maybe flights that you want to take um and yeah be looking now that's a big thing it's, it's not, not too, late. too late that's you know, good news yes okay let's get to it what are some of the deals we have some great deals internationally um so i'll do minneapolis departures from minneapolis chicago orlando seattle so my two favorites from minneapolis to cancun 280 dollars non-stop and round trip on delta through february so normally like seven hundred dollars minneapolis to chicago we have not seen this jason i know you haven't either oh 90 bucks non-stop on on American and Delta through May. $90 nonstop round trip. That was in like, it was oh, crazy. I, I, crazy. I know we could talk we about could, it. That, I've complained about that because I call <laughs> that the peanut flight. It is. Uh, Minneapolis to Chicago, I call it the peanut flight because you, you, you reach cruising altitude, you eat a damn peanut and you land. And, and that flight has been like $600 for years and I don't understand it. 
but it's ninety nine dollars on American. Yes. I'm booking it now. Colin, book it. So just so everybody knows, go on Google Flights to search these. You shouldn't be using anything else. You can search Southwest. That's the only one that's not on Google Flights. But let me keep going here. Chicago to Paris, four seventy eight nonstop round trip on American through April. We're seeing tons. No matter where you live in the U.S., going to Europe is so cheap right now. Another one, uh, Orlando to London, five thirty nine nonstop on British Airways, an American partner through May again through the spring, and then Seattle to Barcelona, Spain, 447 on United, one stop through April again. Like these are nationwide. We're seeing just bananas deals. These are some of the best deals we've talked about on the show for, for sure. years. But you still got to know where to look. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, so Google Flights. Yes. Google, Google, Google Flight. Flights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or Thrifty Traveler. Or uh, sign up. Yeah. I, I'm excited I, I, because I don't, especially for Chicagoans, it just doesn't make any sense to me how four or five hundred dollars for that little bitty flight, an hour long flight. Some of those routes are brutal still. They are. It's just the way it is. Is the 99 thing, uh, is it like Tuesday? I'm, oh, I was going to say, yeah, that's why. It's it, an important point to make. A lot of these flights, not all of them, but some of them, if you can depart or return on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Saturday, those are just some of those lower traffic days and the days that you're going to find cheaper flights. What are the days again? Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, departures and returns. So if you can do that. If you're flexible, I know it's not always easy, especially if you've got a family, but that's one of the big travel hacks. Forget your family and just leave them <laughs> and leave. That's Abandon right. Abandon your family. Abandon your family and go to Chicago for 99 bucks. <laughs> Give it up for Jared, everybody, for the latest flight deals and news. Head to thriftytraveler.com. Don't forget to follow him on social as well. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. I have the best thing ever. Over the past few weeks, you've heard me talk about my uh, recent winter break, mainly the cruise that I took through the Caribbean. Mm. Uh, but there's a mm, mean older people. Uh, but there's another there's another part of my trip uh, that I have yet to talk about, and I have to because I'm naming it another best thing ever, everybody. That's right. So. My, the first part of my trip, we were off uh, for a while. I was off for about three weeks. The first part of my trip was spent in my second home, uh, my beloved Orlando, Ohio, Orlando, uh, at Disney World. And But to get on the cruise, we had to get down to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, that's where the cruise was, and that's where my cousin Stan was, who, who was with me. Uh, so Colin and I decided for the first try, time to try out the new Brightline train. The Orlando to Miami route opened last fall. You're looking at video of the beautiful station. It now offers more than a dozen daily round trips between the two cities. It stops at Boca. It stops at Fort Lauderdale. It stops in Miami. I know I'm missing one. And then it ends right now in Orlando. Orlando, uh, that station is in the new International Terminal and MCO at Orlando International Airport. Uh, this is was and is one of my oddly favorite parts of the trip. We had never used it. I love trains. I wish I wish we had more mm -hmm. uh, high speed rail or high speed rail at all here in the US. This was so convenient. It was so modern, lovely, clean, um, uh, convenient. Uh, so much so that we only meant to take it down once. We only meant to take it down to Fort Lauderdale. Right. But then I altered the trip at the end. I wanted to, instead of ending my trip in Fort Lauderdale, I wanted to actually end it in Orlando. That's how bad the boat was. But anyway, I wanted to go back. Um, so, <laughs> needed a little magic to end the trip. So um, I said to Colin, I go, let's let's get another Brightline ticket and go yeah. back to Orlando. The, the tickets run, uh, I don't want to give a price range, but I think our tickets were... Uh, we're like a 100, 150, something like that. Per person? Uh, yes, per okay. person. So it's a little pricier than you might think it is. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you the convenience of it. We checked our bag. Uh, the moment we got to the station, it was very clear where our bag was. They come out, they bring it to you within, I had my bag within five minutes. Okay. And the stations were gorgeous. They have uh, bars and restaurants. It looks like something out of the 23rd century. I, I, I was just all around very impressed with the infrastructure and the, on the train itself, on the train itself, 
uh, the service was fantastic. Very similar to an airline. Uh, the staff comes down and they have a cart just like on a, on a, on a plane. You can order alcoholic beverages, non-alcoholic beverages. Uh, Colin ordered a sandwich because he was hangry. Not hungry. <laughs> he was hangry. Be clear. And didn't want to wait till we got to Orlando. So we need a sandwich and we needed it now and uh, the food was delicious um, and all the conveniences they have the uh, the the all the charging stations that you want right overall lovely I absolutely loved it okay so normally if you were to drive from Orlando to Miami that takes have you ever done that drive? Um, can you Google that real quick? Here's the, here's what I know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it is faster. Okay. Because of traffic and all that from uh, Orlando. Let me give you an example. Yeah. Great question. From Orlando to Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. it was uh, clocked in at like 2:45. Okay. And I am not joking as far as accuracy. Our ticket said that we would arrive in Orlando at 12:15. This is no joke. As we were slowly pulling into Orlando, the the correct time was. 12, 14, and 58 seconds. <laughs> and I, I laughed out loud. I'm like, wow, they are really accurate with right. their time. Jeff, how long is it? Three hours. Three hours. About three hours. Okay. So, you know, it's it's comparable. It's a little quicker. Much more relaxing, too. Oh, way more relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. The chairs were comfortable. We did not even, we didn't do, you can get, uh, like, premium. We didn't okay. get premium. We just sat... I'm fine, and Colin and I are big guys. I'm 6'2". Mm -hmm. the, the seats were plenty uh, plenty of leg room, and I had a boot. I still was wearing the boot. Oh, right. I had plenty of leg room. Uh, I absolutely loved it, and there's rumors that they're going to extend the bright line to other parts of Florida. Again, if anybody in government in our state and other states are watching, please make a bright line from uh, Minneapolis to Chicago. Thank you very please. much. If we can do that, no thank you. Here. Lord. Oh. Yes. Amtrak takes you seven hours to get there. I, I mean, and as fast as I drive, I can be in Chicago in five. Hey. So, you know. It sounds very... I Sorry, mean, Wisconsin <laughs> State Troopers. Everybody does it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sounds very much like what you experience in Europe. To your point, we just don't have a lot of that infrastructure around here. But when you go there, it's very normal to take the train and you get that experience. So yeah. I would think if you've done that, you would love to do something like this. And, and to all of our friends in Orlando, you're thinking, oh, yeah, of course. But uh, I love your train. Uh, I really loved it, and if you are a tourist and you're heading to Orlando, uh, if you need to go down and visit relatives or go down to Miami or Fort Lauderdale, I would suggest using it. The Brightline train between Orlando and Miami is my latest best thing ever. It was great. Loved it. We're going to take a break. Stay right there. We're wrapping things up when we come back. Back right after this. Welcome back. Don't forget to come see us, eventbrite.com, and search The Jason Show. There we go. Uh, we have uh, some new swag in our swag store. We just added these. Yeah, this is one of my favorite. I wore that. Uh, that's our new sweatshirt. I wore that out, and Colin goes, are you really going to wear that? I go, yeah. I said, uh, hello, you promote your own stuff. I'm wearing that. Anyway, I got one, and I'm really picky about these kind of things. They are very soft and comfortable, and it's a good quality sweatshirt. We also have uh, hoodies, uh, zip-ups, T-shirts, mugs, uh, belt buckles, cigarette lighters. Uh, just aim your camera app at the QR code, and it'll take you right to the Jason Show store. We also have links on our uh, social medias. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> It's funny, I said it on the top of the show, I love that our show is live, it's taped live. If you're watching us in Orlando, you get it the day after, sorry about that. Uh, but I love that we're live because we have some breaking news. This is shocking. Uh, CBS, Paramount, and Comedy Central just announced that Jon Stewart is returning to The Daily Show. Um, Jon Stewart left the show about four or five years ago, uh, and now Jon is returning to host an executive producer. All we know is it will start in the middle of February, I believe February 12th, John will be returning to host on Mondays and will lead a rotating uh, list of uh, comedians that will host the rest of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Huh. I'm sure that day could increase uh, if things go well. What we also know is uh, if you listen closely, you can hear the Brinks truck backing up to John's house oh, yeah. uh, from, from Paramount. Uh, you can hear it right now. 
and then the dumping of the money. Uh, you can hear it, just many, many stacks of dollars uh, just falling onto Such John. Such a heavy yeah, noise. To heavy. pull him. Yeah. But it's interesting and perfect timing as we head uh, into the 2024 election season. Yeah. I can't imagine. Uh, John was recently on Apple, and that TV show ended after he and Apple had some creative differences. Um, this, uh, look, I'm not shocked a lot in entertainment. Nothing really shocks me. I've seen it all. This is surprising to me. This is really shocking. Yeah. Good for him. Make that money. Yeah. We'll talk. Uh, we'll get some more details. We'll have more for you in the hot dish tomorrow. Also tomorrow, he's the dancer all of TikTok is talking about. We're talking about Matthew Greco from the University of Minnesota dance team. He's going to join us in studio to talk about his viral performance and show me some moves. Try. Right now, though, <laughs> go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow. By the way, I'm only going to work Monday starting next year. Yeah. <laughs>